Don't you know we come this far? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the History of Christianity podcast. My name is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International. I want to pause and thank uh, the thousands of you who uh, listen to this podcast. And uh, I want you to know I appreciate your being with me on this journey. As you know, when I became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ so many years ago, uh, because of the dramatic, I guess, salvation experience that I had, I somehow had the false idea, the crazy idea, that Christianity began when I got saved. I had no concept of the hundreds of years of history that Christianity had gone through since the time of the Lord Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago. I have found that many believers, young and old, have the same false idea. And this causes much conflict among Christians. The purpose of this broadcast is to dispel this notion by sharing with the listeners the history of Christianity or better the story of Christianity from the ministry time of the Lord Jesus Christ all the way up until the present day in an easy to understand format and way you don't have to worry this is not a lecture this is just a look at the basic facts and figures of Christian history that every believer and every person needs to be aware of. Our history of Christianity scripture verse today is 2 Corinthians 4 8 which reads we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair. Our history of Christianity quote today is from Don Bosco. He said, All past persecutors of the church are now no more, but the church still lives on. The same fate awaits modern persecutors. They too will pass on, but the church of Jesus Christ will always remain for God has pledged his word to protect her and uh, be with her forever until the end of time. Today, beloved, in the History of Christianity podcast or the Story of Christianity podcast, we are looking at the great persecution and the final victory. Part 4 from Dr. Justo L. Gonzalez's fine book, the Story of Christianity, Volume 1. And by the way, dear friend, if you do not have this two-volume set, please get Dr. Justo L. Gonzalez's fine book, The Story of Christianity, from Amazon.com as soon as you can. He continues... Then help came from an unexpected quarter. Galerius became ill with a painful disease and perhaps convinced by those Christians who said that this was a punishment from God, grudgingly decided to change his policy. According to Christian historian Eusebius of Caesarea, on April 30th, 311 A.D., Galerius proclaimed, and I quote, With all the laws which we have decreed for the good of the state, 
We have sought to restore the ancient rules and traditional discipline of the Romans. We have particularly sought to have Christians who had abandoned the faith of their ancestors return to the truth. After the promulgation of our edict ordering all to return to the ancient customs, many obeyed for fear of danger, and we were forced to punish others. But there are still many who persist on their opinions, and we are aware that they neither worship nor serve the gods, that is, the little g-gods, nor even their own god. Therefore, moved by our mercy to be benevolent toward all, it has seemed just to us to extend to them our pardon and allow them to be Christians once again and once again gather in their assemblies as long as they do not interfere with public order. In another edict, we shall instruct our magistrates regarding this matter in return for our tolerance, Christians will be required to pray to their God for us, for the public good, and for themselves, so that the state may enjoy prosperity and they may live in peace. Such was the edict that ended the most cruel persecution that the church had to suffer from the Roman Empire. Soon prisons were opened, and forth came a multitude of people bearing the marks of torture, but thankful for what they saw as an intervention from on high. Galerius died five days later, and Christian historian Lactantius who made it a point to show that those who persecuted Christians died horrible deaths, declared that his repentance came too late. The empire was then divided among Licinius, Maximinus, Dea, Constantine, and Maxentius. The first three recognized one another and declared Maxentius to be a usurper. As to their policies toward Christians, Maximinus Dea was the only one who soon began anew the persecution that Galerius had ended. Beloved, next time we will continue looking at the great persecution and the final victory. Let's pray. Holy Father God, help us to glean great wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and insight uh, from this wonderful story of Christianity, this history. It is so rich and even so anointed and uh, to the point I am moved to tears uh, from the truth of it. Help us to learn from it, to use it in our present day, to understand what we're going through today, what we will go through in the future. Many of your saints have gone through in the past. And let that be a comfort to us in times like these, particularly for the saints who are under hot persecution right now all over the world. We pray for their comfort and their protection. Let your will be done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friends, simply knowing the facts about Christian history without knowing the one on whom this faith is based will do you absolutely no good. 
If you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, may I lovingly encourage you to get to know him today and trust him as your Savior today. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can be a part of the church in this life and then be a part of heaven with God forever in the life to come. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, please remember that history is truly his story. God bless you. Don't you know it, trust me? Trust me, it is only well.